Well, the incredibly powerful opioid drug fentanyl has gripped the nation as death and overdose numbers continue to rise. Last week, 13 people in British Columbia were killed in a span of 24 hours of suspected overdoses. Think about this for a moment. Officials estimate 3,000 Canadians will die from opioid overdoses this year. This number far exceeds the number of people who die in car crashes every year. Yeah, think about that for a moment. Here to talk with us this morning about what needs to be done is Targul Ansari from Canadian Addiction Rehab. Uh, good to have you here this morning on a really tough topic. Yes, very tough. Yeah, let's talk about this issue that really is uh, seemingly spreading across the country. You know, hundreds of overdoses, hospitalizations every month. So what actually needs to happen to change, to see change in Canada? In order for it to change, we need a very wide range of change from uh, municipal to uh, federal to provincial. Because unfortunately, when this uh, epidemic started, it started right here in Canada from, maybe we'll get into it a little bit later, from not really monitoring the um, prescription of narcotics. And then from there, it was passed on to laboratories in China making um, these deadly drugs and then sending them over and... Um, and now we are at a situation where we are at an epidemic and we are losing people at large amounts of numbers on a daily basis. Yeah, and we've been talking, you know, we've been talking about fentanyl. We were familiar with fentanyl and then car fentanyl has popped up. What is the difference between the two? Okay, so explaining how fentanyl works. So fentanyl um, is about 100 times more stronger than morphine. Mm -hmm. Car fentanyl is used for tranquilizers for elephants. So it is 10,000 times stronger than morphine. So if you can imagine. So about probably 20 um, micromilligrams can kill someone. And about one micromilligram that's like moved uh, in the dosage is about uh, a grain of assault. So you can only imagine how dangerous it is for someone to overdose from ingest it in some way. Exactly. Okay, so I want to ask you, because last week the Liberal government made it easier for communities to set up these safe injection yes. sites. So the criteria went from, what, 26 points to just five. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of controversy around this. What is your take on that? We, um, when we spoke about that, it's a very good first step. We definitely need to be putting more steps into place because the solutions that we have right now are obviously not working. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to be bring other options into it. So yes, the injection sciences, as mentioned, is definitely something that we need to be putting on forward due to the fact that we are going to be on a rise for overdose um, and to save people's lives. But at the same time, we need to be putting same sort of steps forward into the treatment sector of our um, system. Okay, and what about, you know, Vancouver City Council approved uh, a tax hike. They're going to be using that tax to put toward fighting this crisis, including frontline workers. Is, is this one of those things you go, oh, it's just people talking, this money's not going to actually do anything? Or do you believe that this money could help in the process? I believe it could help in the process because, um, like I said, like even, even helping at the borders, um, helping, so it has to be a united help from, from borders to, to law enforcement, to um, health systems, to shelters, to um, injection sites, because when people are sending, uh, they're going online and ordering fentanyl from China, they were sending it under 30 grams because they knew that the borders are not able to open it. So this is how easy it was coming. It was just as easy as going online, choosing your payment method, and within three to four... So Within three to four business days, there was your fentanyl. And we started that epidemic because we were at a situation where we were probably the most prescribed nation. So people were double dipping, people were um, going to different doctors, and narcotics were being over prescribed. So it started from there and it just moved on to perfect, where the laboratories are going to get a hand on it. and traffic it into the system. What about the people that are using these drugs? What are they saying? What are, what are their cries out? What are they saying? How can they help? How can we help them? They, sadly, a lot of them also do not know the dangers of it because it's doctor prescribed. So we were at a time where people would go for um, chronic pains, for surgeries. Then before they knew it, they were put on these very, very harsh and addictive opiates. And the mentality is, well, if my doctor is prescribing this to me, then it is safe. Right. And before they knew it, 
they were at a very, very bad spiral down, losing their jobs, um, losing their family, losing their homes, ending up on the street. And when they find themselves in that situation, then we get into the problem of the government, unfortunately, facilities to help them have long, long waiting lists. And you're losing these people along those lines um, through the waiting list for overdoses and um, for them even getting more deeper into their situation. Wow. Well, we really appreciate you being here today to carry on and continue this conversation, a conversation, unfortunately, we're going to continue to have. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Targal.